Tell you. Hey everybody, this is Chris Mackey again with Unicoi County Extension coming to you live here from our farm. I'm joined today with my mentor and real good buddy, Jacob Boone in Hancock County Extension. And we're gonna do another video mini series, this time focusing on management tips for small remnants. I'm also joined here uh, with my girlfriend, Mindy Cook. She's graciously taken the evening off and uh, we appreciate her coming to help volunteer and be the official sheep wrangler for our management mini series. So today's topic is going to be one of great importance and particularly right now. First off, forgive us, it is raining. Uh, this is the only day that we could do these videos and this is what we're going to deal with. But hopefully you guys can hear my voice despite all the rain that's on the beautiful tin. Um, the other thing too, we don't exactly have our pin system set up and we're going to talk something about that, but we're, uh, I've moved into a new place, so we're working on that as we speak. But uh, back to the, the topic for today, we're going to talk about foot care and specifically uh, foot fungus, how to treat it, how to prevent it and manage that situation. Uh, it, it can be a really big problem uh, for sheep and goat producers particularly this time of year. We're getting a lot of rain, a lot of moisture. There's a lot of mud that's around even in our high um, traffic areas. And no matter how much that you manage your sheep, there's at least a possibility that you're gonna come into this type of problem at some point in, in your um, sheep uh, raising experience. And, and if you haven't already experienced it, you haven't been doing it long enough, and you may not be able to exactly identify it, but um, First, let's talk about what foot fungus is. Um, there's actually several different strains of foot fungus that come from a, a combination of different bacteria. I'm not paid enough to blurt out and pronounce all of these strains of bacteria, but just know that there are two major types uh, of bacteria, and one of them actually resides in the gut of the sheep. And when um, these sheep uh, excrete their fecal matter and it lays down on the ground, in combination with this wet weather, that's what kind of triggers this bacteria buildup in these feet, particularly when we've got overgrown feet on these sheep and in they're in areas where that moisture is retained, it's not dry and it's not good bedding. So always, always, always from a management standpoint, make sure that wherever your sheep reside, that it's a clean, dry bedding that's very deep and there's not a lot of ability for the buildup of manure and stuff to impact in those feet. Because the more that the Manure and, and stuff is, in, is packed into those feet, the more likely those sheep are going to get um, uh, that bacteria to crawl up inside that fungus and in those nooks and those crannies, and that's what causes the foot rot. The first strain of foot rot actually affects the inside tissue of the hoof and in between the toes as well. From there, it'll actually spread and, and, and it will cause foot uh, scald. Uh, and that's the second portion uh, of foot rot. So it really kind of starts in between the tissue of the hooves and then spreads into the hard matter of the hoof. So I've got a couple sheep here that we're gonna demonstrate on. The first one, we're gonna show you what a good, hopefully what a good foot looks like. Uh, and then the second one, I've actually, I've been working on getting her feet corrected because again, this wet weather that we're having, uh, no matter how much you manage them, you're, you're still gonna have it eventually. So. One of the easiest ways to identify uh, foot fungus right off the bat is lameness. If you look out in your pasture or out in your pen and you see there's one that's kind of holding her foot up, maybe she's kind of limping or not putting a lot of pressure and weight on that foot, that's a pretty good indicator that you've got some foot fungus. So first, before we actually do that, I'm going to put on some of our protective gear uh, because a lot of the treatment stuff that we use on these sheep smell awful. And trust me, you'll be the talk of any party. I've been that before and not in a good way. So always put on some kind of protective glove gear. Uh, it also not only just the stink, but it also protects you from getting any kind of bacteria, uh, fungus or anything uh, that could affect you and harm you. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna ask Jacob to come over here. Mindy, if you don't care to grab this, you, but we're gonna show you, hopefully show you, what a good hoof should look like on the inside and where to check for foot fungus. We'll just do that here in front of the dry or where there's a um, good light. So I always like to have help when I do my foot care and we don't have a, a pin system set up just yet. So um, make sure you can corral your sheep in 
a small area. You can easily grab your sheet, pull them out one at a time and work at them. What I'm gonna do is grab this foot right here. And yep, you can see that there's some of that buildup already, but that's a fairly good hoof. You know, it does need a little bit of trimming, but if you get on the inside, there's no infection. I know it's hard to see. There's no infection. Let me see if I can get my phone. Hold on. Sorry, folks. Technical difficulties. Here we go. So you can see there's no buildup of, and what it'll do is it'll actually turn white and red and it'll start to bleed. So you want a nice, hard, lower hoof right here. And so other than maybe just needing a trim on these outer edges here, that's a really good hoof, really good size and shape to that. So good job, Betty. Now what I'd like to show, we can go ahead and let's tie her up. I've got a U here, an older U, that has actually fungus on both sides. The other thing that I like to have handy is all of my foot um, working material in one bucket. That way it's easy to go ahead and grab. And I know that when I grab this bucket, all of my tools and my utensils are in here. So I've got a couple of antifungal, antibacterial anti um, applications. I also have my foot trimmers that are real easy to, uh, to grab a hold. So first thing we're gonna do, again, grab the hoof. And you can see I've not worked on her feet her front feet yet, they're uh, severely overgrown. So we're gonna quickly just kinda trim these feet up, get all the gunk out of them. Easy girl. This is Slick Mama. Slick Mama, cause she has slick bare legs like a suffolk. So we're gonna get all this gunk and stuff off of her legs. And this is really one of the big keys. The better you can keep these feet trimmed, the less likely you're going to have any kind of buildup of bacteria and uh, a, a bacteria and then further uh, issues with, with foot rot. So her, uh, her lower foot looks good, but if you look down, I don't know. I, you can't really see much in there. Maybe it's just this other foot. Yeah, you can kind of see right down here in the bottom. The other thing too is it, all right, so we had a few technical difficulties, but I think we got it solved. So we've got this other foot here and um, we went ahead and trimmed that foot up just a little bit. And uh, one of the other clear signs that you have foot fungus is when you pull that foot up, whoo, it's gonna have a really rank stank. So <clears throat> what you're gonna do is, and it also can give off some heat so if you'll put your hand over the hoof like that, now it's not giving me any heat, but if you'll pull down in there and see, you can see a little bit of redness, a little bit of white and tenderness. She's got starting to have a little bit of, of foot rot. So what I've got here is a um, foot solution and I like to go ahead and flush this on. Just kind of get all that gunk and nastiness out of the way. I'm gonna reach back. Easy, Mama. I'm gonna grab my copper tox, and I'm not promoting copper tox, but it's one of the most readily used foot care solutions that you can find. And put a little bit of copper tox down in the middle of that hoof, spread a little bit on top. People say that's a waste, but I say the more you put on, the better. So I'm gonna squeeze that hoof together, kind of get it up there in those nooks and those crevices. And then she should be good to go. So that's all you really need to do in terms of treating uh, foot or treating foot scald and foot rot on, on sheep. Let's talk a little bit about preventative measures that you can have. One really good way is there's actually vaccines available out there that you can use uh, to kind of help fight off this bacteria. And you need to consult with the veterinarian. Hopefully, you have a really good established uh, relationship with your veterinarian that has recommendations on what vaccines are appropriate for your flock. So, <coughs> the other thing that you can use is actually a, a wash bath, a foot bath. This is a really small one, so I recommend getting maybe a couple of these. 
And what you'll want to do is put this in a high traffic area or in a place where you're working your sheep uh, through an alley system. This simply places on the ground. And when you have wool sheep particularly, now you won't have that with hair sheep or with goats, but get you some wool and put it at the base and the floor of your foot back. This kind of helps prevent some splash because when these sheep step in, obviously there's gonna be some backsplash. So you're gonna waste a lot of your product that's going into your foot bath. So put a little bit of wool on the bottom um, and then get whatever kind of foot solution that you found. Follow the directions on the proportions from solution to water. Those will always be provided on your foot care solution uh, directions. So again, put these in areas where they can't reach and get and drink because some of this is actually can be poisonous when consumed in a lot of amounts. And um, put in a high traffic area where you're working your sheep or uh, where you can funnel them really tight and push all of your sheep through one at a time. So uh, those are two really good preventative measures that you can take that are super easy to do. You this foot bath you can use once a week, twice a week. Um, just however much you see fit depending on the severity and the issues that you run with so um, The last thing before we get to our conclusion Foot rot can actually be spread from animal to animal now the only way that that can happen is for instance I've just cleaned that one sheep's hoof the bacteria has fallen on the ground and so um, And if there's other fecal matter where that bacteria lays uh, Those sheep step in that fecal matter that bacteria is going to get up there in those feet. That bacteria only stays alive outside of the rumen for 10 to 14 days. Um, so if you've got them in an area where they're constantly stepping and um, going to the bathroom, uh, you can have quite a bit of bacteria build up in, in those areas. So keeping a dry, clean bedding is super duper important. So in conclusion, make sure that your bedding is dry and clean. Um, second, Make sure that you do your foot trim uh, and, and care regularly. Uh, we always like to do foot or check feet at least twice a year. Uh, once after, um, <coughs> once after lambing and then or weaning and then right before breeding season. Um, there's some preventative measures that you can use through vaccines, a foot bath as well. In terms of treatment, make sure that you use a zinc sulfate or a copper sulfate. Uh, when treating foot skull and foot rot. So hopefully this has been a very helpful tip for you guys um, on foot care for your sheep and your goats. And if you have any further questions, contact myself, cmackey at utk.edu in the Unicoi office or call Hancock County and ask for Jacob Boone. Thanks again everybody for joining and we'll see you next time.